Good morning, church family. What a privilege to be able to gather with you and uh, it, it virtually, uh, it's it, the best we have right now. But uh, what a blessing to be able to celebrate uh, the resurrection, uh, the culmination of everything that Jesus has done so far as we've been studying through this Passion Week. Uh, boy, I've really been looking forward to the opportunities that we've had to, to study together, and especially as we've been working through the book of Mark. I pray that you've had an incredible uh, opportunity to study uh, each time as we looked last week in uh, the, the tr with the triumphal entry in Mark 11, and, and we've been able to look at it differently through the course of this week with the women and the men, and, and then our Good Friday service um, on Friday night. And I pray that you've been able to, to worship uh, with one another uh, through song and, uh, and enjoyed the, the little video we had to, to uh, see what that kid's interpretation of Easter is, um, just the humor that comes along with the purity of, a, of an innocent child's view of Jesus is just so beautiful. I, I pray that uh, you, you have your Bibles with you, and, and, uh, and I hope that you uh, will turn with me to, to Mark chapter 15. We're going to be looking at the burial and the resurrection of Jesus in the book of Mark, and we're going to be starting in verse 42. Uh, but before we get started, uh, why don't we, we pray with one another uh, this morning. Jesus, I am so thankful to be able to gather uh, with uh, my friends in this uh, virtual way, to be able to, to learn and to seek from your word the wisdom that you have to teach us this morning. I pray that our hearts be softened and open to, to hear from your spirit as you choose to use your word to uh, convict and change and, and uh, multiply. As we uh, go forth from here, Father, may we be used in, in an amazing way to, uh, to change uh, the way that we've gone and to look at this from a new perspective. We pray that uh, you would speak in a mighty way this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. I uh, pray that you, uh, you've had your Bibles with you, and, and uh, we're, again, we're going to be looking at uh, in the book of Mark, and, and as just give a, a, a time lapse as we've been looking through the Passion Week. If you haven't been uh, a part of each one of us, I kind of want to just kind of give us a background story of what we've looked at. Um, I also wasn't at a part of the ladies' study, but I have the privilege of, of understanding and what they've walked through um, with my wife being the one teaching. Uh, the lady studied the G, uh, Jesus and and uh, Mary's uh, encounter when Mary is just has this undignified worship of Jesus in Mark chapter fourteen and has this simple uh, just to s simply listen and sit down uh, and and listen to his truth coming from his word and to listen to his voice that uh, that leads us to respond to become responders with uh, the leading of his spirit in our lives and, and to make God the ultimate authority and, and first love of our, our lives. Charles Stanley put it, obey God and then trust him with the consequences. I, and to enjoy God's favor and, and forever fruit. On Thursday night, the men, we got to look at Jesus' encounter with Pilate at the beginning of Mark chapter 15, and we see the resurrection of Jesus by the Sanhedrin. We see, uh, I'm sorry, the, the rejection of Jesus by the Sanhedrin and by Pilate and by the crowd and, and the injustice that came about Jesus' uh, being found guilty in the midst of these three different groupings. Uh, boy, uh, I, I think we can look at them through judgmental eyes until we look at uh, look at ourselves in a mirror and realize that uh, the injustice of Jesus going to the cross was not because of the Sanhedrin or Pilate or the crowd. It was on behalf of us. It's important for us to recognize that. So if we see the instance of Jesus in front of Pilate being an injustice, it was because of us, and aren't we grateful he did so? On Friday night, we looked at uh, the crucifixion and death of Jesus at the end of Mark chapter 15. We looked at Christ's love and his lordship and his payment for us. We looked at the love that he showed to us in his death, and even the effects that Jesus on the cross was, was letting evil have its way with him by emptying it of its power. 
And believers are free from sin and death and from Satan. What an incredible promise that we've had. I also hope that you've had an opportunity this weekend to to be able to, whether it be through Trinity Broadcasting app or just being able to go on your computer and watch Sight and Sound's production of Jesus, if you have not seen it, I totally recommend it. And it is a great um, partnership with uh, everything that we've studied through uh, this book of Mark um, as we've looked at this Passion Week so beautifully uh, of the life of Jesus. But we're going to be uh, diving into chapter 15 of Mark, verses 42 through 47. I'm going to read it for us. And it goes like this. It was preparation day, that is, the day before the Sabbath. So as evening approached, Joseph of Arimathea, Arimathea a prominent um, member of this council, was uh, himself waiting for the kingdom of God went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was surprised to hear that he had already died, and summoning the centurion, he asked him if Jesus had already died. When he learned the centurion said that, that it was so, that he gave the body to Joseph. And so Joseph brought it back some linen cloth and took it, it down the body wrapped it in linen, and placed it on the tomb cut out of rock. Then he rolled a stone, then he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and, and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw there he was laid. You see, taking place with everyone's heart and in everyone's life, we see and we remember that Jesus in his final cries, he yells victory. And that sound is resonating on everyone's minds. He, they were so thankful of what he had done, uh, but they were so tragically um, hurt of everything that had to happen. And we see through verses 42 through 47, there's effects that come about because of Jesus' death. And it's important to recognize that Joseph of Arimathea was a part of the Sanhedrin who was ruled over, who ruled over Israel. He was a respected member of the council, and he particularly brings the idea or hope of spiritual renewal when we repent um, because Later in Luke, we also see that he is mentioned as a good and righteous man. And we also want to make note that Joseph did nothing as a part of the Sanhedrin to stop or to save Jesus. But when he witnessed the amazing death of Jesus and he had surrendered at, at and, and Jesus had surrendering that moment that took place when he risked everything to be a part of Jesus's burial. And so Joseph went about and, and asked Pilate to have Jesus's body. You see, he risked everything. Joseph could have very well been charged of treason when going to Pilate for, for Jesus's body. And there was a major risk involved. You see, so, so Joseph uh, took the very best care of Jesus in his body because he now knew and understood Jesus' value. You see, Jesus' death brings about value for us. Something is, is only valued of what someone is willing to pay for it. You see, Christ paid with his life for ours. And, and because he declares that we have value. So imagine Mary felt as if uh, a sword had pierced her soul and, and Peter's paralyzing guilt after denying Christ and John the Beloved's heartache, it paired along with the despair of Mary Magdalene. There are so many different emotions that are being felt at this moment. And even in our hearts, as we feel that and resonate with any, any one of those feelings, of knowing what Jesus had gone through. Now, yes, we do understand and know what takes place at the end, but these people that were there experiencing, they did not. 
we again can look at this with judgment and saying, how could they not understand? They have been told multiple, multiple times. But we all have feelings to think about the darkness that, that we have seen throughout Christ's sacrifice. Because of Jesus Christ being sacrificed, his, his life on the cross almost 2,000 years ago, we have the opportunity to be set free from our sins and being called a child of God. There is no greater value for us than to be called a child of God. Jesus Christ had to bear the sins of the whole world while on the cross and bridge the gap between the holiness of God and the sinfulness of of humankind. You see here, uh, a few theological words help us to, to comprehend the meaning of the death and burial of Jesus Christ. All these things culminating as Joseph of Arimathea is laying Jesus' body to rest. We have first justification, which means to be made right. And it, it refers to the believer's relationship with God. Because of Christ's death, the believer in, a believer in Christ can be made right with God. That means that no longer do we not have a relationship or have to go and get a relationship through someone else. We can have the relationship with God himself paired along with the relationship between God and ourselves is brought together. An easy way to remember what this means is to say just as if, I've never sinned because in order to have the relationship between us brought together, we first have to realize that Jesus, because of his death, now we as believers, as followers of him, have been justified and righteous before God. That means that we look good to him and we also looked as if we had not sinned because of the good works of of what Jesus has done on the sacrifice on the cross. Romans 5.1 put it so beautifully, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The second word I want to look at here is the atonement. It means to cover or to pardon. And it's another way of saying that our sins are forgiven. Christ paid the price of death in order that you and I would be spiritually alive. You see, our atonement as a believer means that our guilt and, and sin have been removed. They are gone. And Christ's death on the cross and because of the shedding of his blood took place and gave us spiritual life. We are free from sin because of what Jesus paid. You see, Christ's death brings us hope and meaning. It is a heroic act for him to die on the cross. But I, I love what 1 Corinthians 15 verses 13 and 14 says, but because it says, but if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain and our faith is in vain. You see, it brings about meaning. It brings about hope. It brings about purpose. Everything that Jesus had done on the cross brings that for us. But it didn't end there. What a beautiful picture we have of what Joseph of Arimathea, here he is, and he cares for Jesus' body. But we know it was only for a short time. Let's read it. Chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Shalom brought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus' body. Very early the next day of the week, just after sunrise, there they made their way to the tomb, and they asked each other, who is going to roll away the stone from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, and it was very large, was rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene who was crucified. He has risen, 
he is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell the disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were so afraid. You see, in, in Mark, we didn't have a lot of, of description of the, the, the death of Jesus or the crucifixion of Jesus uh, because, again, it was so familiar to everyone. Everyone knew how someone was going to be crucified. But what we see here within the resurrection, the cross and the resurrection, they go together in verses 1 through 8. You see, we have a promise, the promised pledge to, to, of more to come, that Jesus will rise again. And see, hope of life after death. Jesus' identity was different. He was the Son of God. He was the Messiah. The resurrection is, is coming back to, or, or different kind of existence. You see, the resurrection is unique and, and fundamental to believers. Worried about who uh, would move the stone, the ladies believed that Jesus was Christ and deserved to be treated as such. What a beautiful picture. The second thing I want us to understand is that Jesus deserves to be worshipped. He is, deserves our care. He deserves our consideration. And I think that goes about in every aspect of our lives. That's why worship is a lifestyle. It is setting things aside and making Christ first and foremost. You see, at that very moment that there that Jesus died, there was a, a violent earthquake, and, and for the angel of the Lord to, to come down from heaven right before uh, this, when this tomb, uh, what the stone was rolled away. It, the stone was rolled back, and here this, this angel is sitting upon it, and, and his appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid, we see this in other gospels, that they shook and they became like dead men. And the angel said to the women, don't be afraid, for I know that, that you are looking for Jesus, he, the one who was crucified. He's not here. He is risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Did you catch those words? He is not here. He is risen. The greatest news we could ever have is that Jesus is no longer dead. He is alive. We've talked about throughout this week of how the payment of the sin is now of Christ being crucified. That was the payment of sin on our behalf. But now what takes place? There is victory and there is a resurrection, which is like nothing we've ever seen before. And you might say, listen, Pastor Ben, I understand, but we Jesus raised people from the dead. But it's important to remember this, that Jesus brought them back from death to the very same life. Jesus, it was from the beginning, he was believed as being the Son of God. And there's this connection of sin and death that Jesus came to pay for. And the resurrection that comes about is victory over sin and death. That means that we as believers have the, the sin curse upon our hearts has been removed. And it has gives us victory over sin and death. Christians can be certain that our sins are forgiven. I love what 1 Corinthians 15 speaks as if we can't be a believer without expecting and understanding the resurrection. It would be meaningless to believe that Jesus did this alone. You see, it was the culmination of God, the Father, the Spirit coming together as the Godhead. The resurrection is the link, the link between Death and life. What a picture we have here. 
But there's some significant things of the resurrection of Jesus Christ that are very important for us to understand. The most important event in human history is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This single miracle has transformed history of the world like no other. The Christian life basically rests on the fact that Jesus Christ actually rose from the dead. And based on this knowledge, we have the assurance of four things. First is that he claimed about himself, all that he claimed about himself were true. The second thing is that all he said about his life was true. The third thing is, our sins are forgiven. There is new life in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Fourthly is this, is that Christians have eternal life and have been, have been resurrected from the dead just as Christ was. There are four very significant things that we need to understand about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But there are four facts that go along with the resurrection that is important for us to understand as well. In order to believe the resurrection of Jesus, we need to commit, we don't have to, to commit intellectual suicide here. You see, there are actual a number of facts uh, that are unexplainable if Jesus did not actually rise from the dead. Let us, let's explore these things together. The first fact is this, is that Jesus foretold his resurrection. We see in Matthew 16, verse 22, and in Matthew 17, verses 22 and 23, if Jesus didn't rise from the dead on the third day, these verses in Matthew would actually make Jesus out to be a liar. And we all know that that is not true. The second fact we have is that the testimony of the eyewitnesses of the transformation of the disciples can be explained logically only by the resurrection appearance of Jesus. You see, at the crucifixion of the believers and the followers of Jesus were, were in, in despair. There is hope for a Messiah who was crushed, yet after three days, their lives have been transformed. And 1 Corinthians 15 verses 3 through 8 say different aspects as Paul lists of the very people that appeared, that Jesus appeared before and raised from the dead. If you want to read all about the different things about that prove this, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. You also see that, that there is no doubt that the disciples' lives were changed after the resurrection appearance. I mean, in particular, look at Peter in Acts chapter 2. He has this tell-all story and this tell-all sermon to this large crowd of people and that many were saved and baptized. In fact, the number that it gives is 3,000 were baptized third fact we see here is that the resurrection is the only explanation of the empty tomb. Many people throughout history have tried to disprove the resurrection, and, and there is the truth that comes about the resurrection of Jesus, and, it, and people have said that it can be disproved. But then the cornerstone of the Christian faith would be absolutely destroyed if you haven't read The Case for Christ by Lee Strobel. It is a, a page turner. It is unbelievable. And here is a man who goes out to look to disprove the resurrection of Jesus, and he ends up coming up empty. You see, there were different precautions that were that had been said there were friends of Jesus that and had enemies that ensured that the body had been stolen i can tell you that all those are not true go in particularly as we see in acts 15 we see that his friends would go ahead and see him and that the empty the tomb was empty and in matthew 27 verses 62 to 66 we see that even jesus's enemies say that they saw his appearance. The fourth fact we see here is this, is that the resurrection is the reason for being the Christian church and its rapid growth. 
Within a short time period, the, the Christian faith spread all over the Roman Empire and beyond. And the disciples of, of Jesus always spoke of the resurrected and, and living Christ. You see, the rapid growth of the Christian church happened because of the resurrection, because all these things that Jesus said came true. Hallelujah. We've seen multiple things here that show us about the resurrection and the truth that comes about. But I can tell you, if you're out here just looking for all evidence to come about and, and for this all this knowledge in my head to be the most important thing that helps me gain an understanding to Jesus and his resurrection, I'm going to tell you first and foremost that you're going to fall short. Because this, I'm not saying that it's not true, but I'm telling you that there's a faith aspect that comes along with this. We have to truly believe that those that have been transformed by the gospel of Jesus Christ are the ones that have the greatest testimony to what Jesus has come and has done. And so far, over 2,000 years ago, we see the culmination of Jesus being born, Jesus' perfect life, so that he might die horrifically, so that we might come about and celebrate him and his resurrection miraculously, so that we might live victoriously. Those are things that all come about because of the incredible life that Jesus led. And as we celebrate this Passion Week together, I think there's three things that I want us to remember that we can apply to our lives in this way. In Mark chapter 14, we saw Mary's picture of Jesus, that Jesus deserves our everything in worship. So our challenge this morning is this, is may we worship him that way. Everything. Jesus deserves everything. May we lay it at his feet and give him absolutely everything. Secondly, despite all the injustice in Mark chapter 15, Jesus was willing to be humiliated in front of the Jews and in front of Rome for us. You see, Jesus loves us so much that he paid for our sins on the cross and his perfect blood was spilled for our ransom. He paid for our lives by giving up of his own. How much value we have because of how Jesus sees us. There is no greater value as a follower of Jesus Christ that we can be a child of God. May we thank him for what he has done today. Take time today as you're sitting around your table or as you're sitting around your couches where being together, communing with one another, pause this and just thank him for what he's done today. <laughs> but then the greatest news in history. In Mark 16, we see that Jesus did not stay dead. He rose again and has the victory over death, sin, and Satan. So today, May we worship him, thank him, and celebrate our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, together. For Christ is our forgiveness, our Passover of our salvation, the lamb with which was sacrificed. He was our ransom, our light, our Savior, our resurrection, our King, leading us up to the heights of heaven, showing us the eternal Father, and raising us up with his right hand. We do not have to fear. As believers, we have the victory in Jesus Christ. Now we must go and tell the others, as has been challenged to those who came to find Jesus' body. We see that as we are approaching to see if Jesus' body is there, we know that he is risen just as he said. Now may we go and tell this good news 
to those around us, our loved ones. This is our challenge. Verses 9 through 20 in Mark just basically say, now go. Go and tell this good news. May that be our response to the resurrection of Jesus Christ here today and forevermore. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that you have given us a forgiveness of sin, that you have given us our salvation, that you were willingly sacrificed on our behalf. You are the light, our Savior, and our resurrection. May we hail you as King forevermore. You have led us to the heights of heaven, and you have shown us that you, eternal, are Father God, and you are holding us together in your right hand. We have nothing to fear, nothing to fear at all, because we have victory in you as followers of you. Father, today I pray that if there are people that are listening to this this morning that have not given their lives to you, may today be the day of salvation. May today be the day where they surrender their hearts and their lives to you, Jesus. For those that have accepted you as Savior and believe in your resurrection, may today be the day that we go and share the good news with those around us, because at one point, someone shared it with us. For that, we are eternally grateful, and we praise you and thank you for all these blessings. We rejoice that you are risen, and you have been risen indeed, just as you said. May we trust your word and wholeheartedly to it. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Church. We're so thankful to have celebrated with this with you today. God bless and have a wonderful day. Until next time.